Admit it. You love me. I get your heart beating. We go way back. Not everyone understands. Not your parents. Maybe a few of your friends. But here, today, everybody gets it. Because we all love Dana. Data is beautiful, surprising, yep. inspiring, yep. emotive, yep. Yep. compelling, persuasive. Data is power. It finds truth. It holds answers. It inspires us, motivates us, opens our eyes. Data tells stories, patterns, predictions, outliers, the big picture, the critical detail. Data is our future. It will propel us further. It will make us smarter. It can find the cure. Data is everywhere. It will change everything. Data is our passion. Community, calling, career, inspiration, middleness, sunshine, and life, and home base, obsession, mission. Data is human. We are data people. Please welcome to the stage EMEA Senior Vice President James Eilewart. Okay. Wow! Hello and welcome to Tableau Conference Europe. It is fantastic to be back with this remarkable data community, as well as to welcome you to the historic and magnificent city of Berlin. Thank you so much for joining us. And you've traveled, you have traveled some distances there are more than 61 countries represented in the room today. People from six of the seven continents of the world. There's no one, no one here from Antarctica? Nope, just checking. Uh, so yes, yeah, six of the seven continents of the world are right here. Thank you so much for being with us. Now, of course, this conference simply wouldn't be possible without the support we get from all of our sponsors. So I'd like to extend my personal thanks to all of them, especially our platinum sponsors, Alteryx and the Information Lab. The ability for everyone to analyze all available evidence and data to sort fact from fiction has never been more important than it is today. You don't need to spend long on the internet to see that there are a whole lot of people out there willing to believe almost anything. The Flat Earth Society, for example, has almost 200,000 followers on Facebook. And maybe that helps explain this course. Calling bullshit. Data reasoning in a digital world. This is a real course. It's available at the University of Washington. When launched, it was filled in minutes and it remains incredibly popular today. But the stakes are simply too high for us to leave data reasoning and analytical thought to our friends in academia alone. Data and analytics must become pervasive across entire organizations. And that means everyone, literally everyone, inside an organization taking massive amounts of data and not just collecting it, not just processing it, 
but truly understanding it inside and out. Time and again, organizations tell me that this is what they want to achieve. They refer to it as being a strong data culture, but many admit that they are struggling to actually make it happen. A recent McKinsey survey spoke to a thousand organizations, all with a billion dollars or more of revenue, spanning 13 different sectors and 12 different geographies, and of this, 92% said they were failing to achieve analytics at scale. Now, at Tableau, we take this as something of a personal challenge. If we are to fulfill our mission of helping people see and understand data, then clearly we have a role to play to help customers instill and nurture a data culture. We want to share our own experiences, our conversations with successful customers to help you create a stable, cohesive data culture within your organization. So to better understand how data cultures form and become influential, we took a brief look at how human culture has developed over thousands and thousands of years. And we found that creating a lasting culture depended heavily on three common traits. So why don't we drill into those traits and see what they can teach us about creating a data culture. Now the first is that cultures cannot survive without language. Symbols, gestures, words, whether spoken or written, give meaning to an endless stream of thoughts that are flowing through our minds. Because of a language, we can communicate and collaborate, even across large groups, as we work towards common goals. Language put Homo sapiens on the top of the evolutionary pyramid. Back in the Stone Ages, humans were seemingly insignificant. I mean, we weren't even close to being the biggest or the fastest or the strongest animals on the planet. My guess is that a ferocious saber-toothed tiger or a gigantic mastodon didn't exactly feel threatened when approached by a group of human hunters. Our primitive ancestors must have looked like nothing more than gawky, weird little animals. One quick look at the hairy guys with sticks, and back to the day job. But our ability to use language to work together made it possible for us to hunt them and to bring them down so humans could have saber-toothed tiger or mastodon for lunch. Today, of course, the hunt is for huge business benefits inside our organizations, and data is one of our weapons. If we are to be successful in building a data culture, we need to embrace language, the language of data and analytics. And of course, some companies are already ahead of the game. For example, commercial real estate powerhouse JLL are able to attribute $50 million of quantifiable benefit over five years to having a data literate workforce. However, for many people, data is not yet a familiar language to raise levels of data literacy within organizations, we need to become proficient in data and we need to teach it to others. Now we at Tableau are seeking to help in a number of different ways. Tableau's academic program, for example, 
is helping more than 700,000 students to learn the language of data before they even arrive in your organization. And recently, Tableau teamed up with global digital education company, Avado, to develop and launch a data academy specifically aimed at boosting levels of data literacy across entire organizations. We are thrilled to be working with Avado, as well as many other partners and customers, to raise a generation of data natives. Our second anthropological trait shows that sharing is essential for the development of a successful culture. Our ancestors came together to share their expertise and their experiences, fusing together a diverse range of knowledge and capabilities, making them able to, col uh, to collaborate as a collective force and therefore capable of greater action and greater achievement. More and more people united together, communities grew, small villages became vibrant cities like Athens. And in the heart of the ancient city of Athens stood the Agora, where great minds came together to share their brilliance in subjects like politics and philosophy, mathematics and science. Their conversations shaped the cultural and intellectual development of the modern world, from the way scientists carry out experiments through to the way that we pass our laws. Their ingenuity and achievements inspired others for centuries. Others, including the Italian Renaissance artist, Raphael. 2,000 years after the Athenian Agora was constructed, Raphael constructed this cultural masterpiece. It's called the School of Athens, and it features some of humanity's greatest thinkers. If you look carefully at the picture, alongside the artist himself, who you can see on the far right-hand side, you can find Archimedes and Socrates, Pythagoras, Hypatia, Plato and Aristotle and many, many more, all at this revered place. This stunning work of art has stood for the sharing of knowledge and wisdom for more than 500 years. Although to be true, as I look at it, I can't help but notice the striking resemblance between these great thinkers and these great thinkers, our Tableau community leaders. The similarity is uncanny. When it comes to sharing, there are fewer, greater examples than this. The Tableau community. It's something that we at Tableau have always admired. The Tableau community is in truth probably one of the greatest secrets of Tableau success, as well as the success of many of our customers. So as we look to establish a data culture within our organizations, developing an internal community that is focused on sharing is essential. Give them space to share their ideas, their expertise, their experiences with one another, and then watch them become an incredible force capable of making a dramatic impact upon your organization. Our third and final trait recognizes that lasting cultures are adaptive. 
They're evolving to the ever-changing needs of people within the community. Take trade and commerce. About 3,500 BC, the ancient Sumerians, who were great traders, but also great innovators, found that traditional trading methods were proving insufficient. They had masses of sales going on every single day across tens of thousands of people and merchants, and accurately recording the detail of those sales was becoming more and more critical. So the Sumerians transformed trading practices with the invention of writing. By making simple marks in clay tablets, they were able to capture sales data. Now, as trade flourished, they next found that the use of bartering as a mechanism was also becoming cumbersome. So the Sumerians were some of the first to start using barley as money. It was just a little early for Bitcoin. This new system of currency then further fueled trading to such an extent that it then became difficult to control it and regulate it. So the ancient Sumerians, true to their innovative spirit, formulated the first collection of laws. These laws governed many aspects of life, including areas such as personal rights and contracts and liability. They helped ensure a proper level of economic and social stability throughout the region. The Sumerians had found a way of providing flexibility to adapt and evolve, but within a framework of control. And this is also true for modern organizations. An effective data culture must have the right balance between control and freedom. You need governance to strike that balance. And herein lies that interesting tension. Because if you give too much freedom, you sacrifice control. But if you enforce too much control, you stifle innovation. In fact, what happens is that people rebel, they go around the system, they create shadow systems. You end up with data anarchy instead of a data culture. Finding the right balance, establishing exactly the right governance, gives people within your organization trust and confidence in the data. But pitching it right, especially in highly regulated industries, like healthcare or pharmaceuticals or financial services, can be really challenging. So to tell us more, about how they are finding ways to create a culture that entrusts data to those who understand it the best, while still complying with strict financial regulations. Please welcome on stage the, the head of digital transformation at Credit Suisse, Homer Siddiqui. Hi, Homer. Thank you so much. Please take a seat. Hi, Homer. Thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to Tableau Conference Europe. It's good That's to have you here. That's great. Wow, look, what a turnout. It's so great to see so many data-driven individuals. Bravo. Thank you very much. So why don't you start by telling us a bit about the data journey you've been on at Credit Suisse. Give us a sense of where it started and where you think you're up to now, Homer. Absolutely. So we did five things that I think made a critical difference. Uh, number one, we have a very clear mission statement. This is plastered in our different offices, which says we are aimed to become an intelligence-led tech and data-enabled organization. Uh -huh. So everybody in the organization knows how to repeat that, and they know that's what we're here to do. Number two, we like to repeat what Deming said, which is without data, you're just another person with an opinion. And so that we keep on re reinforcing. Uh, number three, and this turned out to be quite popular, is we started having trivia. So as senior management or the board visited us, 
we would ask them questions such as, do you know how many clients we have? Do you know which is our riskiest geography? And it was fascinating to see how many people, even though they've been in our company for a long time, got the answers wrong. But we made it to be an interactive sort of session so that they could ask us more and more questions about the data, and they really became to appreciate what the data was telling us. And then number four, what we started to also do based on this is start to um, put on the boards in our conference rooms um, a stock chart of companies who are data driven. And you can see that they outperform by 5x what other companies do. And it's very, very clear. The companies of the future will be data driven companies. So all of you who are doing what you do for your organizations, you're making that difference for your company. And then number five is we started to then host meetings with our senior management called sandbox meetings where our leaders could ask us questions of things that they were curious about and we could very quickly give them the answer and sometimes even show them things that they weren't even aware of. And so those five things I think that have helped us dramatically in our journey and I'm very proud to say that three years later we're very well on our way to becoming a data driven organization. That's impressive, some great, some great ideas there. Is, is the use of data a top-down driven thing within the bank? Is it a, or is it more of sort of a groundswell, a bottoms up movement? It's a bit of all both. So we clearly have a top-down imperative, but at the same time, there's a lot of enthusiasm and, and, and energy around um, you know, becoming data analytics driven. And likewise, what I'd also say, and actually the most powerful thing is the sideways sort of alignment that you need mm -hmm. to have. Mm -hmm. In order to be successful with anything, especially in a large bank like ours, it's important that you have a very strong partnership with all of your stakeholders, whether it's the legal department, the tech department, the marketing departments, and so forth, who will then enable your success. Yeah, and so in order to achieve that, whether it's top down, bottom up, or sideways, there's a lot of communication, a lot of getting people passionate about data. Yes. We have a room full Absolutely. of people that are passionate about data, as we are believers, but, but we still need to convince people about the impact that data can have, about the profound transformational change it can bring. What approaches did you use to help convince the, the non-believers? How did you get people inspired about, about the use of data? Well, what we did is we were very humble in the beginning, right? Because many things had been attempted before, and I think that there was a bit of a culture of disbelief. And so we were very humble. Um, what we said was just let us experiment. We always use the word um, either, you know, we'll experiment, we'll sandbox. Sometimes we had things we call submarines, which were actually analyzing specific things. And then at key moments, especially when senior management was there, we were able to drive a conversation around you know, the information and the data that we were seeing. And then, because there were those type of data-driven conversations, it ended up yielding into the next discussion, the next discussion, where you saw the journey that people were being brought in, where b before, you know, people loved to discredit the data, right? And so we would sort of have to say very upfront, look, it's never gonna be perfect, but at least we can make decisions based on the information that we have. Yeah, and I like that sense of, of journey of people getting Absolutely. involved in data and starting to feel it for themselves because you know, for, for in, a, in a lot of situations, it's one thing to provide people with insight, to provide them with data, but getting people to use the data themselves, especially if they don't see themselves as an analyst, can be quite challenging. What, how did you approach that? How did you get people who didn't see themselves as data people to actually start using data? Well, what's interesting is in our organization, we have a lot of data. The average person in a compliance department or a bank is using a lot of data, but they're using it with the traditional methods. And so we have highly educated people who are spending countless hours aggregating information manually and then trying to make sense of it in a very rudimentary way. And it's fascinating when you find those champions on the individual desk and you give them the powerful tools we can give them, how much you liberate them. Yep. And that sort of liberation becomes infectious, right? And then before you know it, they have something exciting and shiny. They want to show it to their management, to their management. And to the point that, as I mentioned in the Sandbox meeting that we have, if somebody's analysis made it to Sandbox, they would actually brag about it and say, I have two Sandbox things that made it because it was almost, almost like getting to the Super Bowl of analytics <laughs> in our organization. Fabulous. And that's that sort of sense of community building and sharing that, that draws people in together, which is great. Uh, I talked just earlier about governance yes. and about trying to find that balance between freedom and, uh, and control. 
And as you scale the use of data within Credit Suisse, you're in a very highly regulated Absolutely. industry. How do you work? What advice have you got on finding the right balance between freedom and control and establishing governance? So I think the most important thing is you need to be very clear about what you're trying to achieve. What is the business objective? What are you truly trying to achieve? Because clearly, if I went anywhere and I said, look, give me all your data and I'm going to do all these amazing analysis, people would get worried about it. But if we're saying, look, we're really interested in understanding our high-risk client population and what are they doing, we don't want to be a headline in the news as it relates to AML, and this is the specific data that I need to analyze X, Y, Z and make it very use case driven, then people will, will come along that journey, right? So everything we do is very risk-based and everything we do involves all the right people to make sure that we're making these decisions on how we're aggregating and protecting our data in a very controlled manner. Very nice. And then if we just look to the future a little, Homer, yeah. um, you've given us a bunch of ideas and some great tips to take home, yeah. but, but as you think about the journey ahead of you, if you think about the future use of, uh, of data within Credit Suisse, what areas are you most focused on looking ahead? Well, it's amazing how much data our bank um, generates, um, and I'm pretty mu very much excited about the use of alternate data and external data, so marrying what we have internally, where we've created the largest data lake at our bank, um, and we keep on iterating on that, but marrying it with external data, that there's tons of amazing providers, plus alternate sources of data, will truly give our bank a competitive advantage, and that's what we're um, excited to be focused on in the coming 18 months. Can you see the use of data and analytics becoming ubiquitous within the bank? Can you see a world where all knowledge workers will be doing it? I think it's an imperative. It's, I, I believe it's existential to where we want to be if we want to compete in this modern era. It's absolutely critical. Great. So um, for my last question, I need you to be very truthful, okay. not that you were no, of course being not. anything but very <laughs> truthful to date. Uh, you also have the responsibility for speaking on behalf of 2,000 customers that are here, so you are their mouthpiece. Uh, we at Tableau are really interested to know what more we should be doing to help customers infuse data into their culture. What advice, guidance, prompting would you give us? Well, number one, I would say continue doing what you're doing. I think these conferences are excellent. I think it's a great sense of community to get people together. I think people are learning from each other and sharing of information and best practices is fairly critical. Um, I personally like the fact that you have customer success managers and you put the word success there so that your outcome is aligned, aligned with our outcomes and you help us understand and achieve that. Um, the one area that I'd probably say requires a little bit more differentiation is related to industry coverage. So we clearly in banking have a lot more challenges as it relates to cloud, on-prem, et cetera, yep. and some of the security yep. restrictions and regulations that we have to deal with. And so therefore, it's not going to be as easy for us to just spin up you know, an instance and get going with our data, right? So some of these more vertical type um, you know, capabilities would be you know, very well welcomed. I believe you already have quite a bit of it, which is great. But I think that if we're gonna continue to make the pivot, and if we are successful, which means we're doing 100 times more than we are doing today, then how do you help us do that in a much more targeted way? Understood and noted. Thank you for that piece of advice. Homer, I think we could probably talk all day, but thank Absolutely. you so much for joining us. Please, all right, Homer on. Siddiqui. Thank you very much, thank you. Fabulous to have Homer uh, with us on stage. Great to have the ability to listen to customers and, and get first-hand advice. As I talk to Homer about the growing data community that she's building at Credit Suisse, I can see all those cultural traits that we observe throughout human history. In fact, those cultural traits come up time and time again when we're having conversations with data-driven organizations. We all know that technology is a great enabler, but we also know it's not the only thing. When you introduce Tableau into your organization, you are democratizing information. That information represents the very essence of your organization, from your customers, to your finances, to your people. With access to the data and the ability to see and understand it, your teams can make better decisions faster, and that in turn defines how your organization moves forward. You are changing the way your organization behaves. And that's why we're talking about 
building culture. Now we've established that for cultures to be successful, they require language and sharing and adaptability. So as you seek to build a data culture, you need to become increasingly proficient in language, the language of data and analytics. We believe you need to establish a community that is focused on sharing. And you need systems that are agile and adaptable and flexible, but also that provide governance. You need secure and trusted data that's up to date. You need to scale with confidence. You need to monitor and manage your systems as your data strategy evolves. Now, putting all that in place, of course, is not trivial. And any support and guidance you can get, we believe, is invaluable. So we've taken our experiences of working with literally thousands of organizations around the world, and we've codified the very best practice that we've observed and been involved in. And with that, we've created a new initiative which I am excited to unveil right here at Tableau Conference Europe. Tableau Blueprint. Blueprint includes all of the concepts that we've been talking about this morning, as well as many others, to give you guidance as you transform your organizations to become more and more data-driven. It provides a step-by-step -step guide to help you assess where you are today and to establish a plan for success. So to tell us a little more about Blueprint and also to tell us about Tableau's strategy to help you unlock more and more value from your data, please welcome on stage Tableau's Chief Executive Officer, Adam Silipsky. Grab a seat, Adam. Thank Fabulous you. to have you here. Welcome to Tableau Conference Europe. Your first TC Europe, I do believe. It is, and I'm so thrilled to be here in Berlin and uh, TC Europe with uh, all of our, our friends in the Tableau community and with the team. Could not be more excited. Great. Tell us what you're most looking forward to. As always, spending time with customers and with partners. Uh, I think that's uh, the beating heart of what we do, and there's no better place to do it than here this week. Absolutely. Agree. Um, I know you speak to customers a lot all around the world as you, as you travel. You talk to them about their data aspirations, what they're looking to achieve. Tell us a bit about the trends that you're seeing as you're speaking to customers from around the world, Adam. Sure. Well, it's very consistent. And uh, like many of us, I do spend a, a lot of time with, uh, with customers. And uh, it, it all starts from this deluge of data that uh, they're all experiencing. I'm sure everybody here in this room understands that. And it, it is not, it's not over, it's just getting started. The years ahead are going to bring you know, even more data you know, raining down on every organization. And for those who, who don't have good strategies for dealing with that, it's going to be a huge problem. And for those who do, it's a huge opportunity for uh, better solutions, uh, in some cases entirely new businesses and business models. Mm. But all of that data uh, requires you know, really sophisticated tools and technology to, uh, to be able to cope with it. And that's why we've so focused on behalf of our customers, as you know, in building out the, the broadest and the deepest full platform for analytics in the world. And that's what we've done. And we have a, a lot more to go on all of those dimensions. But uh, that's what we've been you know, really focused on to date. And uh, customers really need that technology. And yet at the same time, you know, more and more, what they're telling us is that they'll figure out the technology. Mm -hmm. You know, we, while we have lots of work left to do, we've, We've made it good enough that they know they'll get there. Uh, but what they really need in order to, to really succeed is to build a, a data culture, as you were talking about in a, a few minutes mm -hmm. ago. And uh, a lot of times they actually know what that end state should look like, but uh, more and more they're not sure how to get there. And that's difficult because that requires organizational change. It's not about learning technology. It's not about creating a process. It's about changing the way an organization thinks and behaves. 
And that is always subtle and sophisticated in any organization. And that's why, as we've had hundreds, probably thousands of conversations around the world with uh, CEOs and CIOs and CISOs and analysts and, uh, and business users and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and business units, and we've, we've kind of learned a lot. We've had the privilege of having all these conversations, uh, and that's why I'm so excited that uh, you just launched uh, Tableau Blueprint. And that is really our codification of all of the best practices required to create a data culture, really from the, from the behavioral all the way down to the highly, uh, highly technical. And it's, it's V1 of it, and I, I can't wait for us to iterate with our customers on it and figure out how we can improve it and, and drive it to even greater heights. But I'm incredibly excited uh, about uh, the possibility for Blueprint to, to really help people accelerate their migration to a data culture. Yeah, and, and I know there's a lot of sessions on Blueprint right here at conference, so it'll be really interesting to start getting feedback from customers. And talking of feedback from customers, I mean, we have tapped into a lot of customer conversations, as you said, as we've built Blueprint, but perhaps you can be uh, a, a bit more specific. Can you share some examples of customers that you've spoken to that have really impressed you that you think are making really good progress on the journey towards building a data culture? I mean, there are so many, and we're privileged to work with them. I mean, obviously, we just uh, uh, had uh, uh, Credit Suisse, and we're uh, working with them on their journey. Uh, JLL, you talked about uh, uh, earlier. Uh, we're uh, working closely with uh, uh, organizations like uh, BNP Paribas. They've now got thousands of corporate bankers using Tableau uh, to manage relationships with customers. Uh, they've automated 80% of their manual reporting tasks. They've taken 400 page reports, 400 pages, and put them into a single dashboard. Now just think about, not the technical change, think about the behavioral change when you have people not waiting through 400 pages of reports, but are set interacting, you know, back to that sharing concept, yep. uh, with, uh, with a single Tableau dashboard. Um, but it's not limited there. You, you have uh, 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 Schneider Electric, 170 year old, uh, uh, multinational, but headquartered in Paris, uh, industrial company. They also have thousands of people now using Tableau and everything from finance to IT to HR to marketing uh, across a whole variety of, uh, of, of applications and are really well on their, their way in that uh, journey towards a data culture. Uh, other uh, European companies include uh, UBS and Jaguar Land Rover and Lufthansa. I mean, it's a long, long list. Um, and then we've got uh, obviously a lot of US-based companies uh, for example, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, one of the largest uh, financial services companies in the world, they now have over 30,000 people using Tableau across over 500 different departments. I, I couldn't even begin to list all of the use cases there. Um, not just banking, if you take the pharmaceutical industry, Pfizer has over 25,000 people now using Tableau. Uh, they're analyzing cl uh, clinical trials, which is a really neat application. And then they're actually doing a lot of uh, looking at, 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 at actual patient outcomes and uh, 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 drug diagnosis and actually Im improving patient outcomes by, by changing diagnoses, you know, based on the analysis they're doing with Tableau. So it's you know, really important stuff. So I could go on, it goes across every industry, but uh, it's, 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 it, nothing ever excites me more than hearing these incredible customer successes. Yeah, we were talking, uh, talking to a group of customers last night that were talking about using Tableau in the boardroom and how uh, rather than producing massive, great big printed reports for the board, producing uh, Tableau analysis at the boardroom is revolutionizing the way the board tackle the most important problems, can focus on the most important areas. I thought it was really interesting as it starts getting into the boardroom and becoming more and more valuable to change business strategy. Yep, for sure, and that's happening all over. Uh, so we're on to the point of innovation, and I'd like to bring it kind of back to conference a little bit. Um, so. Innovation's at the heart of everything we do at Tableau. So what have you got up your sleeve for the next couple of days? What are you uh, excited that people here are gonna see from an innovation point of view over the next day or so? Uh, we are relentlessly customer focused and we put innovation at the heart of what we do. And we've, we've um, uh, our customers are justifiably very demanding of us in terms of where they need us to go next. And that's what happens when you're mission critical. So uh, we've been you know, very hard at work, and uh, I'm really excited about the things that we're announcing here uh, at the conference, things we announced earlier this year. Uh, I think some of the bigger themes, I won't steal Francois' thunder, or else he'll be uh, very annoyed with me later today. Uh, so I'll, I'll try and restrain myself. But, but at a high level, 
Uh, we're going to continue to push uh, on advanced features for analysts, uh, uh, things like augmented analytics and, and, and really sm uh, uh, smart uh, analytic features. Um, at the other end of the, the, uh, the spectrum, uh, as we move to millions and tens of millions, and I believe eventually you know, hundreds of millions of knowledge workers embracing analytics, uh, these are not all going to be uh, technical people. You're going to have uh, you know, uh, lawyers and graphic designers and pizza shop owners and manufacturing supervisors. And we've got to create you know, ever more intuitive, self-service, you know, non-technical uh, ways of interacting with, uh, with analytics for those people. And we have to continue to allow people to deploy everywhere in every environment that they want to be on in every form factor. So we've got some specifics to talk about uh, here today. Uh, but that'll just kind of be the next wave, and we'll uh, just keep on uh, putting our heads down and uh, staying really focused on what, uh, on what these folks all need us to build. Fabulous, Adam. Thank, thank you so much for joining us in Berlin. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Right. Well, I could not be happier to be here, meeting with tons of customers and partners, and hope everybody has a wonderful week. Fabulous. Adam Silipsky. <laughs> thank you so much. Fabulous to have Adam here with us in Berlin. Hopefully, many of you will get a chance to talk to him over the course of the next day or so. Should we talk about innovation? Would you like to see what's coming down the line? I thought that's the bit you really wanted. Why don't we welcome on stage to share the innovation we have coming down the line, Tableau's Chief Product Officer. Please welcome Francois Agenstadt. Well, good morning, TC Europe. Awesome. It's so great to see so many familiar faces and so many new faces. And yesterday at the reception, it was so great to get to hear your stories and how Tableau is being used across your organizations. You know, as you heard this morning, if we want to fulfill our mission to help people see and understand data, creating a data culture is more critical than ever before. And language and sharing is so important, but technology plays a critical role in the creation of a data culture. So today, I'd like to tell you what we've been working on and what's coming next in the Tableau platform. Now, when you think about the last conference we had in Europe, since that period of time, we've delivered four new versions of Tableau, 12 updates to Tableau Prep, and combined over 180 new capabilities to the Tableau platform. That's pretty amazing, in just one year. And these are new features, such as set actions and parameter actions. Yes, there's some excitement there for set actions. We have new vector maps. We have spatial joins. We've improved the server administration of Tableau Server with the Tableau Services Manager. We added dashboard extensions to give you new creativity and flexibility for developers. We added a brand new mobile app that's faster, works on iOS and Android, and supports offline interactivity. We added Ask Data to enable natural language on top of data. And we added Tableau Prep Conductor to schedule and automate all of your flows, and so much more because the opportunity to help people see and understand data has never been greater than it is today. So that's why we're building the broadest and the deepest analytics platform on the market. A platform that's easy to use by anyone that can easily scale from the smallest department to the largest enterprises. And a platform that gives you choice and flexibility on where to deploy and what data you want to use. And with our fast pace of development, we now de deliver new improvements to this platform every single quarter. And in fact, just last month, we delivered Tableau 2019.2. That was just last month. And there's over, oh yeah, some people are excited. Most of you, when you'll upgrade to that version, you'll be very excited. There's over 40 new features in 2019.2. As I mentioned, vector maps makes all of our maps faster, more fluid. We have more levels of detail in our maps. We added spatial calculations so you can relate data based on location. 
We added parameter actions that add more interactivity and power to your dashboards. There's the ability to show hide containers so that you can see and hide the data, your filters, your zones, anytime you want. We even added responsive mobile layouts so that your dashboards look great on mobile without you doing any work at all. And that's just the highlights from the latest release. And we're doubling down our innovations in three core areas. First, how do we deliver analytics to everyone, from the analyst to the consumer? Second, how do we enable you to scale analytics to the enterprise and focusing around security, governance, and compliance? And third, how do we ensure that you have all this built on a trusted data platform where everyone can make sound business decisions based on accurate and up-to-date data? So let's dig in. So when we think about analytics for everyone, we mean giving analytics literally to every single person in the organization, from the analyst to the consumer, the expert to the executive. Everyone should have access to the data. But it means that we need to also empower everyone to read and speak and understand analytics fluently. Right? Data literacy is something that we all have to increase in our organizations. So regardless of the skill level or your role in the organization, everyone should be able to use data. And you know, as proud as we are of the amazing innovations we've done in Tableau to make analytics more approachable, it's still too hard for too many people. It just is. So we're gonna be continuing to add innovations into Tableau to make the complex simple, enabling you to answer more sophisticated questions more easily. And that's why we're investing in technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and embedding it directly within our platform. Because we believe that these technologies assist people with their analytics need. It won't replace them. In fact, when you add AI and machine learning within our platform, you can pull deeper insights from your data more easily, so you can add more value to your business and really get to the root cause of your analysis. Now, earlier this year, we released Ask Data. Now, Ask Data is our natural language capability. It enables you to ask any question on any data. You just ask a question in plain English, and you get visual answers. It's that simple. Now, since we released it, we've added a ton of functionality to Ask Data. So instead of telling you about it, I'm going to show you. So here we are in Ask Data. This is uh, running in Tableau Server, and it runs in Tableau Online. And for those of you that haven't seen Ask Data before, essentially you just connect to any published data source, both live or in memory, and you just start typing questions. So if I want to say, show me sales, press Enter. Those are my sum of sales. That simple. If I want to break it down by month, I just type. Breaks it down by month over the last five years. Automatically filtered when it refreshes. Sometimes, you know, the server likes to take its time because we're faster than that. So thankfully, I can go in and type my whole question. Show me sales by month uh, and by category in California. So with Ask Data, not only can you ask a question and ask a follow-up, you can also type everything all at once and get your answer, just like that. And we get the best of visual analytics and natural language with point and click. So I can go in and just type in and say, maybe what I wanted was the average sales, and everything just changes. So I can type and I can point and click, and as you see, Tableau automatically figured out the right visualization. Now, in Tableau 2019.2, one of the new capabilities we added to Ask Data is the ability to ask multiple questions, add multiple sheets to Ask Data. So I'll just start a new sheet, and right here, I'm going to ask, compare sales and profit by customer. Now, I made a typo in here, but it still figured out what's right. So it gives me a couple of different options, because it doesn't really know my intent quite yet. So in this case, I'll just choose the first one, and now we have our scatter plot. And again, maybe I want to know, uh, drill in for tables. 
I don't know where tables are. Is it a subcategory? Is it a category? As a user, I don't need to know. I just type, and I get my answer. Now, with these visual best practices, not only uh, does it come in, I can always change it and say, show it to me as a bar chart, text table, heat map, pie chart, tree map, et cetera. But I'll just use the default. Now, the other thing we added in Tableau 2019.2 is the ability to add calculations using natural language. So if I want to know what is sales divided by profit uh, for subcategory, again, I, it's great to type on stage. There it is. So now I press enter, and we've defined a calculation on the fly. I didn't have to do that using our calculation editor. I just type the calculation, and I automatically get it. Now, the other thing you could do is um, have synonyms, because in organizations, for natural language to work, you may have different ways of saying the same thing. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, show me bookings for Andy Kreeble. Is Andy here? No? He's, he doesn't want to be here because he's going to be in the demo. Um, so if you see what I type, show me bookings for Andy Kreeble, it resolved it as show me sales for the South region because Andy Kreeble came from Atlanta in the south region of the US, and I get my answer. Now, this is possible because in Ask Data, we have a concept of synonyms. So you can have different terminology for the same thing. For the dimension names, right, you can call it whatever you want. Um, I can go in here and also have for my values, you can see west could be west coast, it could be the warriors, east is the raptors, you're welcome, Kent. Are they the winners? They're the champs. That, that is basketball, for those of you not following at home. And, and so you can add all your synonyms there and essentially manage all that. Now, one of the key questions that have come up is that when you build natural language, you may want to know, well, what kinds of questions do your users ask? Well, in Tableau 2019.2, we added usage analytics. Now you get full visibility into the natural language questions that your users have asked. You see all the answers on the bottom. Thank you, server, for refreshing. So we'll go to our other, other server. Um, it'll bring up all the answers. You'll see all the utterances and what people have asked for. Uh, you'll see an error here. Great. These are live demos, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we rehearse and prepare. Uh, I can go in and see all the user questions and what types of spelling mistakes or different terms that people have used right here. Now, when I use natural language, which I did it right here, when I use natural language to create all of my questions, at this point, I can just save it to the server, and it just becomes a workbook that I can use to subscribe, define alerts, do anything you want. But the other thing we're adding in Tableau 2019.3 is the ability to embed Ask data anywhere. Now, you can put ask data in your portals, in your applications, and really empower everyone to deliver natural language anywhere on any platform. And embedded ask data is coming in 2019.3. So that's a glimpse of ask data. I Hope all of you are using it, but really the potential is to empower more and more people to ask questions of their data. And there's a lot more coming to Ask Data later this year. And yes, we're also working on supporting additional languages for Ask Data, not just English. You're welcome. Now, <laughs> now this is just the beginning. We're also moving from answering questions about what happened to why it happened with a new technology that we're announcing today called Explain Data. This is really, really cool and extremely powerful. Explain, Explain Data is a new engine that we built directly into Tableau that automatically creates interactive explanations of your data. Explain Data uses sophisticated algorithms to understand the significance of trends and statistics in your data and helps you discover new It's like looking under every rock on your behalf and finding the three rocks to go and explore further. 
So really the best way, the best way to understand the power that explained data will bring to all of you is to see it, to see it in action. And for that, I'd like to bring the one and only, the always incredible, the product manager for analytics at Tableau, Bethany Lyons. Bethany? Yeah. Hello, Berlin. I am so excited to share that you are the first customers ever to see Explain data. In your data, you may have things like time, location, quantities, and amounts. Ask Data is incredibly flexible, and I'm going to show you how it works with all of that. I recently bought a house in London, and so I have this great data set on house sales. In this visualization, we're looking at the average duration of home ownership by borough. And I can see that there's this one borough that's different. In this borough, people move more frequently. And I'd like to know why. And so I'm going to select this new icon that appears in the tooltip to explain this specific value. Right now, Tableau is running machine learning models, considering every column in this data source, selecting and ranking them to find the most informative ones. And now it's come up with a combination of natural language and visual explanations. So let's take a look. In this left-hand panel here, I can see that it's generated a number of different explanations ranked by their informativeness. And in this right-hand panel here, I can see a visual explanation. And so this gray bar shows the distribution of house sales in London in general, whereas this blue bar shows the distribution for my selected borough. So this says that a higher proportion of house sales in Newham occurred in young ethnic communities. Let's take a look at another one of these explanations, like housing affordability. In this case, it's found that a larger proportion of house sales occurred in neighborhoods with extremely low affordability. What about this third one here? This is looking at percent of the population that's retired. And this shows that almost all house sales in Newham occurred in boroughs where less than, in subregions where less than 10% of the population was retired. So that's interesting. I might want to explore this a bit further. Does anyone recognize the software that might have been used to build these visualizations? This is a Tableau visualization integrated directly in Tableau, and so I can go and use this explanation as a starting point to ask the next question. And so now, if I wanted to look not just at retired people, but all people, I could drag age in to replace this, and now I see instantly that in my selected borough, people are much younger than they are in London in general. And young people are more mobile, they're moving more often, this could be why they're selling their homes more frequently. That is the power of explained data. It's like having a trained data scientist guiding you through your analysis. So now I'd like to show you how this works with dashboards. In this view, we're looking at the number of house sales broken down by regions. And I can see that there's this high density in this area over here. So let me zoom in, and I'm gonna select this particular area. And now I can see that there's these huge spikes in both number of house sales and price adjusted for inflation. And so I'd like to know why there was such a huge spike in the number of 
house sales in this quarter. And so I'm going to once again explain this specific value. And now what it's found instantly is that in this quarter, there was a much higher proportion of, of properties were brand new buildings. So new buildings means new construction, new construction means more supply, more supply means more house sales. So it's helped me explain that spike. But now what about this other spike here, where there was a particular quarter in which the average price of houses sold was nearly seven million pounds? What caused that? Let's go explain that peak. To explain data comes up with a number of different types of explanations. And in this case, it's identified a single extreme value. There was a transaction in that quarter that was nearly valued at 100 million pounds. And so I'd like to see what happens if we were to remove that data point. And so now we've come to this visualization and we can see here's what our time series would have looked like removing that 100 million pound transaction. So just to show you again, this is the original time series, and this is it, re removing that extreme value. But now what happens when I remove that extreme value? Another peak appears. And so now I can run explain data on a visualization that was generated through explain data. You can recursively iterate on your analysis. So let's find out what happened in this particular quarter. Instead of cycling through every dimension in my data source, it's automatically finding the most informative ones using machine learning. And here, it's come up and shown that a much higher proportion of house sales in this quarter were for properties of this type other. And that could potentially include things like commercial properties that are causing the price to be so high. And so I'm going to come in here and just exclude this from my analysis. And excluding that brings this down to a time series that, where each quarter falls more within the expected range. So that is the power of explain data. It's integrated, it's relevant, and it's designed for everyone. Thank you. So good, so good. What do you guys think? Pretty cool? This is giving you brand new superpowers, and it's going to be part of Tableau on desktop and the web for all of you to use. I can't wait to get your feedback on that. Now, with capabilities like Ask Data and now Explain Data, you can get insights faster than ever before. And we have lots more innovations planned in this area to really bring analytics to everyone. But as more and more people use data, analytics becomes mission critical. And there's a greater need to deploy and manage analytics at scale and ensure that we can meet your security, your governance, your compliance, and your scalability needs. And today, many organizations all over the world are deploying analytics at scale with Tableau. Organizations like BNP Paribas, Lufthansa, Schroeder's, Honeywell, Telefonica, and many others. These organizations have business-critical deployments of Tableau with tens of thousands of users, even hundreds of thousands of users today running on the Tableau platform. But as your deployments scale, so do your requirements. And you need us to help you with things like security. How do we give you more security controls and flexibility? How do we give you better insight into performance and scalability of your environment? And how do we make the platform easier to manage so you can spend more time delivering analytics rather than managing the platform? Well, in every release, we keep investing in more enterprise capabilities. Release after release, we're adding more enterprise class features to Tableau to help you and your organizations. 
And in 2019, in fact, next quarter, we'll be adding support for encryption at rest of extracts directly in Tableau. Now, all of your extracts in Tableau server will automatically be encrypted should you need it for your own uh, requirements. I never thought I'd get applause for, encry for encryption, but it's that important. But we're taking one step further with a new project that we're calling Project McKinley. Now, Project McKinley is a code name for a broad set of capabilities that's really focused on making deployments of Tableau easier to manage. Now, there's a couple of aspects of Project McKinley. The first thing we're doing is we're leveraging cloud cap capabilities, cloud services, to improve the reliability and scalability of your deployments. You'll now be able to use Amazon RDS instead of our built-in repository for additional scale and resiliency. We're also giving you more flexibility and more control on customizing which nodes will process data engine queries and background jobs. Now, in addition to scalability, we're also adding new tools to help you get the most out of your server. So we're improving the monitoring capabilities in Tableau server to diagnose and tune the performance of your server. And we're also adding new tools to migrate content across your different environments. So if you have a dev, test, or prod environment, these tools will help you seamlessly move content across these environments. And last, we're also enabling more security controls with Project McKinley. We're adding the ability to bring your own security keys with support for key management stores. So now security and encryption is in your control. Now these capabilities and more are coming later this year as a separate add-on for Tableau server. But as you empower people to build their analytics muscle, you also have to make sure that they have the right data fueling their analytics. And because if you don't trust the data, you can't really trust your analysis. You need to ensure that your analytics are built on data that is curated, clean, and current. And that's why the first step in Tableau is getting the right data in your environment. Today, we support over 75 different data sources out of the box in Tableau, both live and in memory. And in our next release, we're adding support for a new connector to Databricks. This will enable you to leverage advanced data science models and use the full compute power of Databricks directly in Tableau. But we're also going deeper with our existing connectors. For those of you that use SAP HANA, we're adding support for leveled hierarchies in SAP HANA so that you're able to really see your data the way that it's structured in your database. Now, once you have access to the right data, it's not always ready for analysis. It can be kind of dirty, and you have to t sp spend time prepping your data. And that's why we introduced a year ago Tableau Prep. Now, Tableau Prep is now being used by over 10,000 organizations all over the world to clean, reshape, and combine data of all sizes so it's ready for analysis. And we're continuing to add features to Prep Builder every single month. That pace of innovation is accelerated. Every month there's new features to Prep Builder. And then earlier this year, we introduced the server component to Prep Builder, which we call Tableau Prep Conductor. And it's used to schedule and automate your flows. So you can ensure that you always have the right data and good clean data that's up to date for analysis. And we're continuing to add more functionality to Prep Conductor for resiliency, for scale, and for automation. And next quarter, we're delivering Tableau Prep Conductor for Tableau Online. This is a full SaaS version of Prep Conductor. You just publish your flows, and we manage the infrastructure to scale Prep on your behalf. Simple as that. So Prep Conductor and Online coming next quarter. But with all of this data becoming available, new challenges emerge. How do you know what data your users are actually using? How do they trust that they're using the right data? How do they discover the right data to use for their analysis? And what we really want to do is do what James mentioned earlier, which is deliver self-service with governance, giving empowerment to people 
while having control and visibility into the environment. So today, I'd like to introduce you to a brand new capability coming to Tableau, the Tableau Catalog. Now, the Tableau Catalog is built into Tableau, and it enables you to better manage your analytics by having a complete view of all of the data in your environment. Now, the first thing you'll see in the catalog is that you're going to be able to see all the databases and tables that your users are using. Automatically, Tableau Catalog will index all of your databases, all of your tables, and you'll be able to understand what data is being used by whom. But it also gives you the ability to do lineage or impact analysis so you can really understand what might happen or how data was created automatically with a Tableau catalog. One thing that's really unique, though, with our catalog is that the metadata that's defined in the catalog flows all the way down to the users. Because when your users are consuming visualizations or dashboards, how do they know what data they're looking at? Should they trust it? What do the fields mean? Well, we're integrating that catalog, all that catalog metadata, directly in the consumption experience so users can not only see their data, but understand and trust the data at the point of consumption. And third, a really important thing about the catalog is it improves discovery. Now every creator and explorer can quickly search, and find the right data for analysis through enhanced searching in Tableau Server and easier discovery in Tableau Desktop and web authoring. That means that instead of connecting to a kind of database and figuring out which table to use, you can now use the catalog to figure out how to use the right data at the right time for analysis much faster than before. So, before I do the demo, there's one more thing which is that the metadata in the catalog has a full API. And that API can be consumed by other enterprise catalogs. If you're using Calibra, Alation, Informatica, or the many other enterprise catalogs are, that are out there, they'll be able to read the metadata from Tableau and push metadata into Tableau. So you're able to enrich your enterprise catalog, your enterprise glossary, and improve both ways between Tableau and your enterprise catalogs, or build custom applications with these APIs as well. All right, do, I, do you guys want to see the catalog in action? Yeah? All right, let's do it. OK, so here we're looking at Tableau server with the catalog enabled. Now, it looks the same, doesn't it? But you'll notice that on the left, I have a new tab for external content. When I click on this, we'll get to see automatically all of the databases that our users are using, where they're coming from, and what kinds of databases they are. So right away, I can see what data and where it's coming from. Now I can go in and drill into one, one of these databases and see which tables are used in these databases, how often they're used, what fields are in there. And I can drill into one table and see all the fields that are used in that table. This was done with zero setup required. We just turn on the catalog and everything is indexed automatically. But I'd like to bring your attention on the right. This is what we call the lineage tool. This helps you see the relationship in your data, how data is being used and transformed through your environment. So this product dimension is used by one data source, two workbooks, 10 sheets, and has one owner. And you can see that it comes up from one database. It had, if I had a prep flow, for instance, you could see all the transformations that resulted in that one table. So look what happens when I click on product category. Look on the right. Click. You can see everything that's impacted by product category. Or if I want to see subcategory. Boom, I see those on the right. From seeing to impact in a second. And at this point, maybe what I wanted to do is deprecate this field. This is a field we shouldn't use. So I can go and actually, with one click, go and notify the owners of, that are using this field to say, please don't use this field, or we're deprecating it. Please update your workbooks accordingly. That's it. Now, you can also provide additional information to your users. 
So for instance, if there's a data source that shouldn't be used because it's got stale data or it's uh, undergoing maintenance, now we can add data quality indicators as well so that your users always have confidence everywhere in the platform. So the catalog enables you to see all your databases, all your tables, but as I mentioned before, because it's fully integrated into the Tableau platform, the value of the catalog spans the entire platform. So here, I'm looking at a monthly sales metrics dashboard, and I can see all my data, but can I trust it? Where is this data coming from? What do the fields mean? Now, look on the toolbar. I have a new option called data details, and when I click on that, Metadata from the catalog flows in right in here. I can see the workbook author, when this was published, what data source it's coming from. I can drill straight to the data source. I can see all the fields that are in use, and the metadata about those fields, the glossary information, will flow in here as well, automatically. So now I can see the data, but I can get extra confidence that it's the right data to use, that it's trusted, and what everything means. Pretty cool? All right. Now, the last thing for authors is that we're integrating the catalog into the authoring experience as well. So whether you're using Tableau Desktop or Web Authoring, you'll get the same experience. Here I'm going to use Web Authoring, and I'm going to create a new workbook. And just as before, I can connect to the appropriate database that I care about. And so if you think about what I would normally do, I would choose a database like SQL Server, choose the database table, uh, choose the database it's in, the table, which fields, but when you have hundreds of tables, how do you know which one to use? Well now, with the catalog, all that metadata is available right here. I can see my data sources like before, but I can also see my databases and files and tables. So with one click, I can say, give me all the tables. They're all ranked based on popularity. I can search for something that includes a uh, category, and so that's a field in one of my tables. It'll reduce it down, because I don't know, nor do I care, where categ uh, category is stored. I want the catalog to do that for me. And so now I can just click my product dimension, press connect. It'll ask me for my credentials, because everything has to be secure. And voila, we have connected. Connect and go, powered by the catalog. Trusted data visibility into your environment, and easier discovery and trust across the board. Pretty cool? So the Tableau catalog is included in our Tableau data management add-on, which will be available for Tableau server and for Tableau online. So this provides you with one add-on that includes Prep Conductor to schedule and automate flows, and the Tableau catalog for visibility, trust, and discovery of all of your data. Now, we're focused on helping you harness the full power of your data so everyone can see and understand their data. And all the capabilities we've seen this morning, from explain data, ask data, encryption at rest, Project McKinley, the Tableau catalog, will be available in Tableau 2019.3, which is coming very, very, very soon. And we look forward to your feedback and all of your ideas so we can continue to build the best analytics product for all of you. Thank you, and have an incredible conference. <laughs>